Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. Today is February 2nd, 2018. This isn't going to be a college vlog or anything. I'm actually just about to go to Gavin Newsom's South Bay meet and greet. If you don't know who he is, he's a candidate for governor in California and he also helped get a gun control initiative on the ballot in 2016, which was passed. He's someone that I've looked up to since I was in elementary school, but I've never actually been to one of his events and I've never actually seen him speak in person. So I'm really excited to go to this event. So I'm walking to the bus right now and it's actually a beautiful day out. I'm totally fine just with this light jacket. So I just got off the bus and I'm walking to the event. It's currently 11.50 and doors are open until 12, so I'm pretty early. Let's give it up for our Lieutenant Governor, our great uh, leader, our inspiration that's going to be the leader for the future in California. <laughs> Is someone recording this? <laughs> Gavin, Gavin Newsom. Gavin. Sometimes politicians can go off on a little bit too much of their personal history, but I want to give you a little taste of it. I had a very young mom, uh, she was a teenager. She had my sister and a couple of years later she was separated and literally raised us on her own. She worked hard. She was one of those people, maybe like you, that had two jobs her entire life and then always some part-time work. One of the great jobs she had, because it really was indelible in my life, was working as a development director for aid to adoption of special kids for not only physically disabled but developmentally disabled kids and it really shaped an early bias in terms of my respect admiration and appreciation for all the things that make us so wonderful and that's our unique uh, i as a consequence uh, had the privilege of, uh, as jim said to be part of a foster family we brought in my friend stephen uh, and then larry joe and some others and uh, they moved in with us and we got to learn a little bit about the foster care system. Um, we learned about what happens with emancipated youth. I remember Suleiman's last day when he could legally live with us. He stayed with us after, but that was the last day that he was part of that system. Uh, and by the way, he doesn't have a problem for me saying this. He dealt drugs, grew up in Marin City, had a mom with half dozen kids, different fathers. Mom's still part of his life, but she struggled. She's a wonderful person. She just struggled. And Suleiman struggled. He's got a bunch of kids, but he's a good person. Shaped my belief system as it relates to drug policy as well, trust me. Because it was always interesting. Guys that look like Suleiman, always the first ones being arrested and booked. Guys like me, for some reason, I wasn't the one being said, hey, what's in your pocket? Hey, come with me. All that sort of develops a, a bias, right? that experience, that personal experience. You all have that lens of your own unique experience. And so that's really brought to me the consciousness around these issues that have really allowed me to express those uh, as a county supervisor, as a mayor uh, of a small suburb of San Jose, San Francisco. <laughs> I just want to thank all of you for being here. And I mean all of you. We did not expect this turnout in the middle of the day. I also want to thank you for being here at this remarkably challenging and anxiety-inducing moment. I mean, quite literally, moment, because it is moment by moment, tweet by tweet, day by day. We're all working through this together. I imagine that's why a lot of you are here. We just need to, you know, hug each other. <laughs> so, sir, you know, we, we haven't lost our senses. And others share similar concerns about what's going on. And I, that fear and anxiety is manifesting in profound ways. The assembly member has been very aggressive on the issues of protecting our dreamers, and, uh, our DACA recipients, and making sure we celebrate, we don't tolerate the extraordinary diversity, not just here in this community, but across this state. The fact is, now more than ever, in the spirit of the center's introduction, we need to step up and step in. You can't be timid. Yeah. It is not a time for timidity. Yeah. It's not time to sort of be with you. Forgive my use of language, but, you know, we're at war yeah. Yeah. with the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. He's at war with us. Yeah. Yeah. You need a wartime governor. I hope we have an opportunity to dive deep your tough questions and dialogue about your perspectives on how we can move together to make California uh, dream once again be resident for every single resident in this state. Universally, it's just accepted it's men. Violent crime, men. Domestic violence, men. So it begs the question, what the heck's going on with our boys and men? We have a crisis in this country, the way we're raising our boys and men. My wife started an organization a decade ago called the Representation Project. Her whole focus is not just on the under-representation of women, but the misrepresentation of women and girls. Her last film, 
called the mask you live in about toxic masculinity. You don't need much more evidence than yeah. your TV set and the State of the Union. <laughs> no, we have a problem. So I just got back from the event and it was really awesome. I've watched a lot of Newsom's speeches over the last 10 years or so, but it was so amazing to hear him speak in person. I didn't record everything, but he really took the time to answer people's questions. There was a whole podium set up at the laborers union, but he actually didn't use it. He just kind of walked around and answered people's questions, which to me showed that he really cared about answering people's questions. I'm not gonna go too far into other people's stories, but we talked about things like mental health and assault and gender and gun control and, and so many other important issues. He actually went about 20 minutes over. His assistant or someone that worked on his campaign I kept telling him that it was time to wrap up, but he just kept answering questions. Obviously from this video and other videos that I've made in the past, you all know that I've been supporting Newsom for a while, but I'm not making this video to tell you to vote for Newsom. I would be really upset if one of you went to the polls and didn't really do any research, but just voted for Newsom just because you recognize his name from this video. I really want you all to do your own research and go to events like this so that you can learn more about the candidates because I think it's important to know why you're voting for who you're voting for. This was a very California-centric video, but maybe there are a few people from other states watching. And I would like to encourage all of you as well to figure out what elections are happening in your state in 2018 and to go to events like the one that I went to today so you can learn more about the candidates and what they believe. Voting is really important, but you have to know who you're voting for and why. So please try to seek information and get involved. I know that a lot of the people that watch my videos are very young and there aren't usually that many young people at these events. I think I was probably the youngest person in the room, but I did actually end up meeting someone else who is young and involved in politics and she has an Instagram so please give her a follow and comment that I sent you. Us young people really have to stick together at these events. I've been the youngest person by multiple decades at events before. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. At the end of the day you're there to listen to the candidates and to get involved. So that's everything that I want to say in this video. If you haven't registered to vote yet check out the first link in the description. I love you all so much. Stay awesome. Get involved and I'll see all of you very soon with a new video. Goodbye.